morning, Quad Copter 101 here. And today's Notification Squad shout out goes to Nocta X. Nocta X was first to say first in one of my recent videos, and this one's a shout out. So, congratulations. Good morning, Quad Copter 101 here. Um, we just had quite a bit of uh, lake effect snow up here in Erie, Pennsylvania, and it's, it's going to be a while before I can go outside to fly again. Uh, but in the meantime, that'll give me a chance to do some indoor flying down in my indoor flight test facility, <laughs> since I, I can do that nowadays. Uh, but with that and also in mind, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to try to get back to the basics of what the Quadcopter 101 channel was all about. It, was, it should be all about and still is, in my opinion. And that was to help new flyers enter into the RC hobby. Okay, and one of the things I, I did in the beginning when I first started my channel was some a few tutorials, uh, but some of those tutorials were kind of lacking, and I'd like to try to redo them again. Uh, starting off with uh, what I'd like to do is flight basics of vertical takeoff aircraft, namely drones and helicopters. Uh, they're very similar, both you know, the, especially the controlling of, of each. So I, you know, there are differences whether you uh, go full um, 3D mode on a helicopter. We're not going to talk about 3D mode. We're going to talk about stabilized flight. And in that case, both drones and helicopters are very similar in flight performance. So with that in mind, I'm using what is called the Heli, Heli 101. Um, it's from a new company called uh, First Step RC. Um, it's, a, it's a basic helicopter, a uh, nice helicopter. It has uh, um, altitude hold and 6G stabilization, so it makes it very appropriate for beginner flyers. And on top of that, why I'm using a helicopter instead of a drone is that this helicopter is much more efficient than most drones, okay? This, this one will give you about 15 minutes of flight time per charging of the battery, so that gives you a lot more practice time, and that's, that's why I want to prefer to use this for the this start out um, of the uh, flight to, Quadcopter 101 flight tutorial. Um, uh, series that I plan to do here. Okay, but uh, let's start off. We'll talk about the controller first for uh, drones and helicopters. Um, this is it's a basic controller as you can see here. And now there, most controllers uh, and ready to fly controllers are available in what's called mode one or mode two. And in fact, there are also a mode three and mode four, but you don't you rarely see them in. Um, uh, ready to fly controllers. Okay, again, mostly you see mode one or mode two, and the difference being, you know, mainly is which side of this is uh, the throttle on on the particular controller. On uh, for mode two, uh, the throttle is on the left side, and mode one, the throttle is on the right side. And why is the difference? Well, there's no. I've never really seen a real explanation of why. You know, you would prefer to have left or right, but I have seen a, a slight. Uh, uh, coordinate, or not coordination, I'm looking for the word here, but uh, particularly in channels, or in, not channels, but in countries that drive on the right side of the road tend to have to th use throttles on the left, mode two. And I've seen in a lot of countries that drive on the left side of the road seem to want to have the throttle on, on the right, i.e. mode one. Okay, so, you know, that's, that's a rough coordination between the two, but... Uh, Let's talk about mode two. And why am I saying mode two? Well, let's say most of the world <laughs> uses mode two in their ready to fly controllers. So we're going to focus on mode two in this uh, particular uh, tutorial. Now let's talk about the controls. Okay, on a mode two controller, on this left stick here, this is your throttle control going up or down. Okay, more throttle makes the helicopter or drone goes up. Less throttle makes the helicopter or drone come down. Okay, now with also on the left stick here is what's called yaw control. If you move to the left, the quadcopter or drone will turn, hover, or pivot to the left. That's a better word. And if you move it, the stick to the right, the quadcopter or helicopter will pivot to the right, like so. So that's yaw control. On the right side here, we have what's called pitch control and roll control. Moving the stick forward or back will pitch the helicopter or drone forward so that it slides forward. Or if you pull back on this stick, it will pitch the helicopter or drone back so that it will slide backward in flight. Similarly, if we move this right stick to the right, 
it will pitch the helicopter or drone to the right so that it'll slide to the right. And if we pitch it or yeah, pitch it to the left, the helicopter, yeah, pitch it to the left, the helicopter or drone will pitch to the left and slide to the left. So those are the basic controls on a mode 2 controller. Again, throttle, yaw, pitch, and roll. Now let's talk about we're going to focus on the helicopter right now. How does the helicopter uh, take those um, inputs and actually translate it into uh, going up or down, forward, back, right, left, and pivoting? Okay, on the, the helicopter, particularly this helicopter, uh, this does not have what's called collective control. But the way, when you give it more throttle, this has a, the motor will speed up, causing the propellers to speed up more and cause the helicopter to rise, okay? Um, decreasing the throttle on this helicopter will cause the uh, motor to slow down and thus the helicopter will start to descend. Now giving it yaw control, let me stick over here, moving this left stick left or right causes this tail rotor motor to either speed up or slow down. Now this main rotor spinning is going to create some torque. Okay, and what I mean by torque is if this tail rotor uh, motor was not on here, that would cause this the bottom helicopter to spin around uncontrollably if that bottom motor wasn't there. So this bottom motor is balancing the torque from this main rotor blade to keep the uh, drone pointed in one steady direction. Now if you speed up or slow down this back motor, that will cause the helicopter to yaw. And that's what happens when you give it control on this. This will cause this back motor to speed up or slow down to induce that yaw on the helicopter. Now when we give it pitch control, let's talk about pitch control. Let me push this stick forward. What that does on these, these rotor blades is there is a um, what we have is cyclic control and what cyclic control means is there's these little linkages here that will cause the propeller blades as they spin around the back here to increase their pitch. Okay, as they spin around the back, these back propeller blades will increase their pitch, increasing the lift on the on the back end here and causing the helicopter to pitch forward. Similarly, the front end will decrease pitch, uh, causing reduced lift on the front, again, enhancing that forward pitch. And if we pull back on the pitch stick, that causes these pitch linkages to adjust the pitch of the front blade to increase its angle of attack, creating more lift, pitching up the helicopter. Again, similarly, the back end will decrease, decrease its angle of attack, or its angle going into the wind here as it's spinning, to decrease the lift, and thus uh, also helping to pitch the helicopter backward. And the same works for right or left when we're doing roll control. So that's, that's the basics of this particular helicopter. Again, this does not have collective control. I'm not going to talk about collective control at this time, uh, but yeah, well, I'll bring it up. <laughs> okay, again, we're controlling uh, up or down movement with a throttle, but our helicopter with collect con collective control actually keeps that motor at a constant speed. And to go up or down is this entire plate will go up or down. This is called a swash plate. And if the plate goes up, that increases the pitch on the the uh, helicopter blades front and back at the same time so that you increase lift on the helicopter to make it go up and then pulling down will decrease the angle of attack on the front and back blades to make it go downward so that's how a collective uh, swash plate works but we don't have that on this particular helicopter although we do have altitude hole control altitude hole control I'll talk about that when we go actually flying this helicopter Okay, I want to go back to the controller again. Now let's talk about these buttons, particularly these buttons by that are directly under the um, yaw stick and the buttons directly under the pitch roll stick. These are called trim buttons, folks. Um, this would normally be a throttle trim, but not on this particular controller. Uh, for this particular controller, it controls something called rates, and I'll go into that at a different time. But uh, we're going to focus on trim buttons. Now what the trim buttons do is this helicopter, you know, you give it throttle um, in a perfect world, in a perfect day, you know, if this was perfectly tuned, the helicopter should not move from its hover. 
but that's not the case, folks. You know, there is going to be some misalignment of the blades. Um, one blade is going to be a little bit different than the other. And, you know, there is going to be always be some drift, induced drift on the helicopter. And what we want to do to counter that without wind, when there's no wind, <laughs> is to use these pitch but or these trim buttons. Okay, this trim button on the bottom here controls trim of the roll command. So if this is roll, sliding to the right, we could counter that by pushing this button to the left. And that will, will adjust the uh, pitch of the blades on the right side to increase the pitch a little bit so that it will balance itself out. Similarly, you could do the same with the... Uh, uh, we were talking about roll, I'm sorry. <laughs> roll there. If we roll to the right, we can counter that with this button on the bottom here. Now, if we're, we, we're drifting forward in flight, say like so, we can counter that forward movement by pressing down on this pitch button until the helicopter starts to come to a stable hover. Um, similarly, if this is yawing to the right or left, and this, is, it, this shouldn't because this is gyro stabilized, but if it does, you can counter that yaw by this button on the bottom here for controlling the yaw trim on this particular helicopter. Now let's talk about, I mentioned it shortly but uh, and quickly, but 6G mode. What is 6G? 6G provides stabilization of this particular hel helicopter using electronics. Okay, normally in the past they, they used to use what's called a fly bar, which was a little centripetal force, <laughs> uh, centripetal uh, lever that would go around and if the, the helicopter would would go off of uh, you know be pushed around by the wind or something causing it to tilt or so that would automatically adjust the uh, pitch control links to counter that okay that was a mechanical means of doing it nowadays helicopters use accelerometers and gyroscopes electronic gyroscopes and like accelerometers very tiny <laughs> okay um, it's done electronically, actually, but uh, to uh, detect any roll, uncommanded roll or uncommanded pitch of the helicopter or uncommanded yaw of the helicopter, it uses those to automatically provide um, input to the helicopter's controls to try to keep the helicopter balanced, stabilized in effect. That's electronic stabilization. That's called 6G stabilization. Um, the G is a misnomer. It's it's actually three accelerometers and three gyroscopes to provide that, known as six degree of freedom stabilization. But the it somehow it got shortened to being called six G. I don't know how, <laughs> but that's it. That's the um, now for a, as a beginner flyer, you're going to want to fly in with six G stabilization to help uh, automatically stabilize the helicopter. It makes it much more easier for you to fly it. So um, when you get better, you can actually turn that off so that some helicopters are actually capable of flying upside down. <laughs> you don't want to do that as a beginner. Trust me, you do not want to. You will break the helicopter. So, But again, this helicopter has 6G stabilization, so that, should, again, makes it an appropriate helicopter for a beginner flyer. And as such, let's... Let's take this down into my uh, basement test facility and take it for a test flight and demonstrate hover. We're going to focus on hover in this first lesson. And uh, future lessons, I'll talk about translational flight where we can go forward, backward, and then we'll talk about turns in another lesson. So let's take it down to the basement and talk about hover. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here, and welcome to the Quadcopter 101 Indoor Flight Test Facility, i.e. my basement. <laughs> okay, um, first off, uh, we're going to, again, focus on hover only for this particular lesson. And with that in mind, uh, we're going to do very little uh, controls on the left side. We're going to focus mainly on pitch and roll control of hover and a little bit of throttle. We're going to talk about throttle also on um, getting the quadcopter in the air. And we're also going to, we have to talk about trim buttons too. So we're going to talk about trim, and that's very important too. So uh, to start this particular quadcopter up, you need to push the battery in. Make sure that you get it right side up and push the battery in until we see a light there flashing, like so. Again, this is the M1 heli or the Heli 101 helicopter uh, from uh, what company is this again? It is First Star. Or first step incorporated helicopter heli 101 
Okay, we're going to put it on our takeoff pad. Now, notice I have two different pads here. You can get a fancy pad like that, a helipad like that. But even a uh, nice piece of cardboard works just fine, folks. I've just got two of them here because we're going to practice landing, uh, takeoff and landing between the two. But um, notice the lights, again, still flashing in the back of the helicopter. That means that that battery uh, or that helicopter is looking for the signal from the controller. And we need to connect this controller to the helicopter. To do such, we turn on the controller like so, and right now it says, okay, I see a signal, but is, is that, do I want to bind to this particular uh, transmitter? And to do that, all we need to do is go up and down on the throttle once, and we should see that go solid, and it says, okay, I agree to use this uh, transmitter. Now, what you need to do, folks, is stand directly behind the helicopter, okay? This way, we're going, again, we're focusing on learning uh, hover, and as a beginner, you don't want to get lose orientation. If we stand behind the helicopter, uh, we can uh, fly this helicopter and maintain um, hover by just using the pitch and roll right and left, you know, forward, backward, and you don't lose orientation if you stand behind the helicopter. As a beginner, um, I recommend staying behind the helicopter. Um, it makes it easier to fly. Now, again, we're going to next thing we need to do is to start those motors and to start those motors we're going to bring bro sticks down and outboard and that'll start the motors and bring them into idle and then we're going to need to take off and we're going to do that by increasing the throttle slowly until we lift off the ground and we want to get to about an uh, altitude of about halfway up in the room we don't want to go up close to the ceiling because it actually can suck itself up into the ceiling by the uh, the pressure sensor of that uh, uh, altitude hold uh, pressure sensor in there, um, it's, it starts to get screwy when you get too close to the ceiling and also when you get too close to the ground too. So we want to be right about halfway up when we leave the ground. And also when we're taking off, here I'm going to put something in there right now, be wary of any movement of the helicopter. If it starts drifting left, be ready to counter that with a rightward, or rightward, <laughs> rightward control on this pitch roll stick to counter that left movement. Similarly, if it goes to the right, we want to go to the left to counter that. And then we're going to try to counter that. Once we get it balanced a bit, or once we counter it, we're going to try to, to correct that drifting using the trim buttons. And I'll show you how here shortly. So first off, let's get into the air. Again, both sticks down and out like so to start up the motor. We want to be directly behind it and giving it a little throttle till we take off the air and we know we're drifting. Right, right away, we see we're drifting to the left, and drifting backward, and drifting to the left, and drifting to the left. Okay, how do I stop this drifting to the left? Well, we're gonna use that trim button. Okay, so what I need to do, let me get it up to about halfway up to, so that I don't get too close to the ground or too close to the ceiling. But it, see, it's drifting to the left. So what I'm gonna do is keep repeatedly pressing this right button until that drifting stops. Okay, that is trim. And now is going, that's about good. That's good enough. Okay, see, now I don't need to hardly give it any control input at all. It's drifting a little bit forward, maybe a little backward to stop that. Now I'm gonna to try to bring it back toward me. So I need to come backward and to the right to bring it back toward me and to the right. Backward and to the right to get it back over this hover pad. So, okay, we got it trimmed, more or less. I still need a little more right trim there folks <laughs> okay one more let's bring it over see if that trim did it anymore okay so now as a beginner what you need to do is try to keep it over the landing pad okay don't fly it around the room uh, don't try turning it with the yaw at this point all you want to do is practice hover keeping it above a, a point in space and maybe practice takeoff and landings so so with, with that in mind, let's try the landing. So we're going to gradually lower the throttle and try to get onto that landing pad. And there we did it. Okay. So before we take off, we're going to straighten it out again because we're not going to mess with the yaw. We're going to try to avoid yaw uh, controls at this point as we're just practicing hover. So again, we're going to start the motors down and up, giving it throttle, getting it back into the air. Checking our trim. Trim looks good. We need to give a little forward push on the right stick. Now let's take it over to the left pad. Be careful. Uh, 
sometimes I overcorrect too much. You want to be real gentle on the controls. And let's try to land it on this left pad. And there we go. Okay. Centering it on the pad. Starting the controls. There are motors giving a throttle. Looks good. Give a little more throttle to get it up halfway. So, again, all we're doing is practicing hover. And I recommend it's going a little too high. <laughs> when that happens, you got to lower that throttle. Okay, I lowered the throttle right about there. And again, we're just practicing keeping it over one position here. I'm feeling some uh, wind blowing in my room here because I got, I think the heater just came on. Uh, but be aware of that, folks. If you, this is not going to hover on its own, okay? It's not going to hold in place on its own. You are going to need to manually provide some inputs to keep it in one position. There comes the heater right now. I can hear it. So with that in mind, there's going to be some wind blowing here now shortly. And not a lot of wind, but it's going to be enough to, to cause some uh, movement of the helicopter. And, and your trim controls don't, you know, if there's a wind, don't trim against the wind. You want to trim when there's absolutely no wind. Okay, right now there's wind, it's bouncing around. <laughs> so, uh, what am I trying to say? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you want to provide trim on the helicopter or on the aircraft when there's no wind. So, again, just keep practicing takeoff and landing. Get a couple pieces of cardboard for your landing pads. Go from one to the other and back and forth. And just remember, always stay behind the helicopter as a beginner. And we'll, in part two, we'll discuss uh, um, using the yaw control. We're going to go and, and do an intro into uh, what's called translational flight, where we go forward and backward, forward and backward, and turn in the process. We'll talk about turns in the second lesson. So this is the conclusion of part one. Again, just for, with part one, just keep practicing hover and landings, hover and landings until you, and practice using this right stick only as much as you can. Okay, don't mess around with the yaw. So, hope you enjoyed this part of the series beginning uh, hover, the hover, <laughs> the hover um, tutorial. And again, we'll go into yaw and translational flight in the second tutorial. So going back and forth, back and forth, just practice going from one pad to the other. So, hope you enjoy this quadcopter 101, setting out. Hi, Quadcopter101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.